What's up guys, it's Cody here. And today we're gonna to be talking about iOS 11 and how terrible it is. Now, iOS 11, when it first came out in beta, there were some issues, of course, we expected that to happen and battery life was absolutely terrible in the first couple of betas. Now, we expected that to get a little bit better as we continued through the betas and we finally got to the Golden Master version or the actual public iOS 11 release. Well, it turns out iOS 11 still kind of sucks and there's just been a ton of issues that people have been bringing to Apple's attention. So in this video, I want to go over some of the fixes that you can do on your device in order to make that iOS 11 experience a little bit better rather than you know wanting to throw your phone against the wall every single time you do something. So things that iOS 11 users have ran into are apps freezing, the entire phone freezing where you can't do anything other than restarting your entire device, apps crashing, and really the massive one is battery life because battery life is just terrible. So you can see here there's a Wandera report showing iPhones running iOS 10 versus iOS 11. And what this basically says is that iOS 10, they could use their devices for 240 minutes on average before the battery dies. Meanwhile, iPhones running iOS 11 last just 96 minutes on average, which is a huge 60% decline in battery life. So in other words, the decay rate of iOS 10 is 0.006958% per second. And for iOS 11, it's 0.01739% per second. So I'll be showing you a ton of ways to save battery life in iOS 11, so just stick around. So the first thing that you're going to wanna do is upgrade to the latest iOS 11 version. So iOS 11.0.1 just came out today, so definitely upgrade that. There weren't like a ton of new features in this update, and it was actually around like 230 megs to 280 megs. I can't actually remember how much it was, but there was a big update, but with no new features. So hopefully, in that update, it's going to address some of these really, really big problems that people are having in iOS 11. So that's first and foremost. Now, just keep in mind, if you are on iOS 11 beta, you're probably gonna go to your settings app and you're not going to see that update. So if you're in that situation, all you wanna do is just plug your device into your computer, open up iTunes, and then click check for update. That way, it's going to look for that 11.0.1 .1 update and then you can install it directly from your computer. Now, another way to get this update if you don't have a computer to plug your device into is you need to go in to your settings and then delete that beta profile. Once you delete that beta profile, restart your device, and then you can check for your updates and you're gonna see that 11.0.1 .1 update right there in your settings. So first step, update your phone to 11.0.1 .1, and then use it for a little while and then see if those issues that you were having diminish or go away completely. Now, if this doesn't work, then what I would recommend is you back up your device completely and then you restore your device to factory settings. You do this all on iTunes, so just plug in your device, back up your device to iTunes or to iCloud, however you like to do it, and then restore completely to factory settings. This gets a clean slate for iOS 11 to be installed. And sometimes if you do your update over the air, you can run into some issues that you wouldn't run into if you did it through iTunes. Once you completely restore your device, then you can restore your backup that you just backed up onto your phone and then hopefully that's going to get rid of some more of those issues so those two fixes are probably going to be more addressed to you know the apps freezing the apps crashing or your phone just completely locking up where you have to reboot your device so what i want to do now is show you several different things that you can do in order to save battery life on ios 11. so let's hop over to my desk so this is my iphone 7 plus i'm on ios 11.0.1 and now we're gonna be going through some of the steps that you can take in order to save some of that battery life. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice here is if we swipe up on the control center, we have our toggles right here and that Bluetooth toggle right there, you can't actually turn it off from the control center, which is pretty insane. So you can see if we tap on that, it just says not connected. It doesn't actually turn it off. It just disconnects everything from Bluetooth. So what you actually have to do is go into your settings here and then go here into Bluetooth. And just to show you that it doesn't, I will toggle it off and then you can see that it's still enabled right here in the settings. So in order to turn it off, you actually have to go into the settings and then turn it off. Next, let's go into brightness and display. So right here I have auto lock turned on to never just so I can you know show you this video, but I would definitely recommend on tapping on this and then putting it on 30 seconds. That's going to save a lot of screen time, which in turn is also going to save a lot of battery. Now in terms of brightness, the most ridiculous thing that I think about iOS 11 is that they took off auto brightness from this panel. I mean, it's literally the, the brightness tab and it doesn't have auto brightness in it. So the way to actually get to brightness or auto brightness is going to your general and then tap here on accessibility, display accommodations, and then here is where auto brightness is. 
absolutely ridiculous that this is where it's hidden deep down into the settings menu. So you can turn this off completely. And then what you would want to do is just keep your actual brightness level lower. So the only way that this is going to help is if you turn this off and then keep your brightness level lower than what auto brightness would actually keep it at. It's not going to help if you turn off auto brightness and then just crank up your brightness all the way. Next, you can reduce white points. So if you toggle this on, this is basically going to reduce how bright the whites are on your device, which in turn is going to save battery level. So you can swipe this all the way down if you want to, and you can see that it's going to get brighter, or the more that you reduce it, then that's going to get darker. Of course, this is going to obviously allow you to get lower levels of brightness than you would normally get to without having this reduced white point on. So now let's jump into cellular right here, Wi-Fi calling. So you can turn this off completely just by tapping right there and that's gonna save some battery life. Obviously you wanna turn off personal hotspot. This thing is murder when it comes to batteries. So if you don't have any reason to have the personal hotspot enabled, make sure you toggle that off. You'll also wanna scroll all the way down here and this is all the applications that will use cellular data if you have them toggled on. So for whatever reason you don't want them to use cellular data, then you would just toggle that off. So for instance, I don't ever use that app, so I'm gonna turn it off. So, I mean, you can just go through here and you can toggle off whatever you want to. Obviously, the more the better. Notifications is also a big one. So if we tap on this, this is going to allow you to turn off notifications specific to whatever application that you don't want notifications for. So you just tap on like AccuWeather, you can turn off allow notifications. That's gonna save some battery life because it's not gonna push those notifications to your device. In turn, it's not going to light up your device every time you get a notification so you have less on-screen time. So turn off as many as you can there. Sounds and haptics, if we go into this, you can turn off vibrate on ring and you can turn off vibrate on silent because vibrating definitely uses quite a bit of battery. And if we hop back out of here and we go into Siri and search, then you can turn off listen for Hey Siri because it is always listening for Hey Siri if you have this toggled on. But if you toggle it off, then of course it's gonna stop doing that. Same thing for the spotlight down here. So suggestions and search and suggestions and look up. You can just disable both of those and that's going to save some battery life as well. And there's gotta be something we can turn off in battery, right? So obviously low power mode. That's of course going to be your best friend if you just can't get enough battery life throughout the day. So you turn on low power mode and it's gonna implement a lot of settings for you in order to increase that battery life. Also just knowing which applications you use the most or which applications are using most of your battery, you can just scroll through here and if you see something that you know that you don't ever use that somehow is you know in the top 10 applications, then that's something that you definitely wanna check out. You're also gonna have quite a bit of options here in privacy. So first of all, let's talk about location services. Location services, those are basically going to track wherever you go using that GPS on your device in order to give you suggestions or let you know what's going on in that particular app if it's location based. So you can see some of these are while using. Uh, so the AccuWeather is while using. Acton is always. Uh, Apple Store always. So you can turn these off, not necessarily all the way off. You could do it while using the app. That means only when you're inside the app or if you want to save the most battery life, then you can tap on never. That way you can turn off whichever ones that you're using here that you don't ever want to use your location. You can also completely turn it off, which I wouldn't recommend just because those location services do come in handy. But definitely go through these apps and turn them off. Same thing for share my location. If you don't need to share your location for anybody, then you can toggle that off right here as well. So I'm gonna do that. Nobody cares where I am. Now also here in location services, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom after you go through all of these and uh, filter those out, you go down here into system services and then you can start toggling these off. So first of all, compass calibration, something I absolutely never use. Find my iPhone, you probably wanna keep that on. HomeKit is not something that I use ever. Location-based alerts, I don't need those. Location-based ads, I absolutely don't need those. And like I said before, I don't need to share my location. You'll also see right down here that you have significant location. So if we toggle this on, you can see that it literally will track you everywhere you go. So if you wanna to toggle that off, you can toggle it off right there just by tapping on that and then you're good to go. Down here for motion and fitness, if we tap on that, you can turn off fitness tracking. If you don't for whatever reason need your fitness tracking on, you can turn that off right there. Also one I skipped up here is wallpaper. So if we go into wallpaper, the first thing that you wanna do is only use still wallpaper. So if you use still wallpapers, then that's going to save battery life in comparison to those live wallpapers. Also, when you set one, you wanna make sure that you're setting it as still. So set it as still rather than perspective, set both, and then you're good to go. 
Another one I forgot to mention in accessibility. So you go into general accessibility and then you want to scroll down here to reduce motion. So if we tap on reduce motion and you toggle this on, then that's going to limit the animations that happen on your device, which obviously will save you some battery life. Popping back out here into general, you also have airdrop and handoff. So if you don't use airdrop, actually you should probably turn off airdrop at all times until you actually need it. That way it's not looking for devices to share airdrop with and you can save battery life this way. And when you actually need it, you can just turn it on. Same thing goes for handoff. If you don't use handoff, you don't have a Mac or a MacBook, you don't really need handoff. Uh, this is something that I use a lot, so I'm gonna leave that toggled on for now. But another really, really big one is background app refresh. So if we go into background app refresh, these are the apps that are always refreshing in the background of your device. So you wanna go into here and you wanna turn these off the ones that you don't want updating 24 seven on your device. So you can literally just go in here and you can toggle them off. Also, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of privacy, you can tap on analytics and toggle off share iPhone analytics. Same thing for share iCloud analytics and for advertising down here, you can toggle this on to limit the ad tracking. But back here on the main settings panel, again, if we go into iTunes and app store, then at the very bottom here, we have offload unused apps. So if you tap on this, this is going to automatically remove any of the apps that you don't use. It's gonna keep all that documents and all that data. And if you reinstall that app, all that data and all those documents are gonna be put back onto that app. But this right here obviously won't just save you battery, but it'll also save you some storage space as well. So, so if you're all right with getting rid of the apps that you don't use on a regular basis, then definitely toggle that on. All right, guys, that's all I got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wanna stay up to date with everything Apple or any other tech that I wanna cover, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.